If you ever had trouble with Google Ads tracking or you looked at setup and you have no idea how to set up your conversion tracking, this is the video you need to watch. I'm Matty Ads. I have many, many years of Google Ads experience at the highest levels working for Silicon Valley marketing teams and digital agencies, managed well over 50 million in digital marketing spend. And today we're gonna cover how to set up your Google conversion tracking so that you can get credit for every purchase, sale, lead, download that you make. And we're also gonna look at how to link up with Google Analytics 4, which is newly released. Not too much information on that yet on the internet. And so we're gonna do that all today. So keep watching if tracking is an issue for you. And let's go. This is straight from Google's help doc, which you should reference for anything that you really do. It's a quick, quick and easy reference. Uh, effectively, we just need to set up a couple tags or containers on our website and put in some conversion codes. And the layman's terms of that is, we just want Google to be able to track everything that happens on each page of our website and know when a user takes an action that we have specified. So the first step is to log into your Google AdWords account. Go up into the top right. There should be, it depends which view you're looking at Google Ads, but you can always switch views right here if you want the, the expert layout, which I recommend. Top right, go to measurements and click conversions. And then we're just gonna start Start setting up the first conversion action. So we have a, a website called thegiftyak.com. It's an affiliate website. And so we're going to want to track link clicks. You might want to track sales or page views or signups, or you might have an app, phone call, or another conversion that you can import from Google Analytics. And I'll show you how to do that as well. But for now, we're going to do website conversions. We're going to call it an outbound click, and I'm just going to give it a name called ad click. I'm not going to assign a value to that. You can if you're doing some type of add to cart or e-commerce purchase. So we're going to set up uh, no, no value on that. So here's the thing with counts. This is basically saying, hey, do you want to have a unique count? Do you want to count only one time or do you want to count every time? For me, I anticipate as somebody's going through my website, since it's a review article, they're going to click on multiple links within my review article out to Amazon. They might even go to a new article and click multiple links there. Uh, just because of the space I'm in, I think I'm going to count everyone and then I'll, I'll figure out what the average is. For your business, it probably matters to potentially only have one if you're doing something like a sign up or a lead because you don't want to, can, if somebody continues to sign up, you don't want to continue counting them as a, a sign up for your business. Your sales team can only reach out to them once. They can only create one account, those types of things. Click through window is basically this. It says when somebody clicks your ad, Google is gonna tie that conversion, if it happens, back to that ad for 30 days. That is a standard click-through attribution window for Google tracking. The one I would watch out for, which is always tricky, is view-through conversions. So view-through conversions are just somebody seeing your ad, they never actually click to go to your website, and then at some point in the future, they convert. This is mainly a big problem when it comes to Facebook ads, YouTube ads, and display ads. Because how do you pro properly attribute somebody who might be scrolling through YouTube or scrolling through a website with display banners up, and then 30 days later, they end up coming to your website and converting. Are you really gonna attribute that to them seeing a banner ad 30 days prior? No. So so what, what happens mainly is this view through window is much shorter. So one day is the minimum here, and we're gonna leave that there. This setting is just saying, hey, do you want to include whatever conversion you're setting up in, in a column called conversions within Google Ads? Uh, the answer for me is yes, because I'm only going to have one conversion event for right now. It's going to be somebody clicking an ad out to Amazon. And second, it makes it just easier and simpler when I do some data analysis. I don't have to make a what's called a custom column. Uh, if you have multiple conversion events, you might not want to include them all into the conversions column, especially if you're running some type of automated bidding like target CPA or max conversions. And then finally, you can set an attribution model. So how do you want to attribute this conversion event? 
Think about this as tying back to this click-through window setting. Do you want to only fire a conversion when somebody converts from the last click, right? Because technically somebody could click many of your ads in a series or a path before they actually get to the conversion event. Here's a great example that's probably not relevant for me, but think about Best Buy, right? Best Buy sells $3,000 TVs. If somebody searches for new TV and clicks a Best Buy ad, do you think they're gonna convert and buy a $3,000 TV, $3, TV right then? Probably not. They're probably gonna do more research. They're gonna spend a couple of days looking at competitors. They're probably gonna get other advertisements on you know, a display banner or Facebook or YouTube or wherever, right? They're gonna see multiple ads from Best Buy and competitors. And then maybe finally, they've narrowed it down to a TV that they really like, the LG 600 series model. And they type in LG 600 series model buy now into Google. And then boom, they get another Best Buy ad and they click it and they buy. If you have last click attribution here, the last click is gonna get the credit, right? That, that final click before the, the purchase, the conversion, whatever it is, will get the credit. And you can change that. You can say, no, actually I wanna give, I wanna give the credit to the first click. That's what really matters. That's what got him in the door, you know, seven, 10, 14 days ago. Or you can say, no, I wanna give, I wanna give every click, every part of the conversion funnel credit. And so then it will chop up that one conversion into equal weighted percentages. Or you might say, no, I wanna use time decay. I wanna, who, whatever the most recent click was, I wanna give credit to that. And then the furthest back click, right? Probably the first, second, third click, I, I wanna give less credit to those. Or you can do position based, which is gonna, it's basically gonna say, hey, the first and the last click are the most important. Let's give them the most credit. And then we'll, we'll kind of uh, uh, give less to the middle parts. The, the vast majority of digital marketers and companies that are running digital marketing campaigns are using last click attribution. Now, what's becoming more and more popular is these types of data-driven attribution or multi-touch attributions. For the scope of this video, it's not really relevant. One, I can't even choose this because I don't have enough data in my account. And two, I would say this is probably a, a much bigger and broader topic of, of how do you attribute properly. For us and the intents and purposes of what we're doing, last click is going to be more than enough. Just realize that if you're running Google and Facebook ads, right, Google's going to take credit for a conversion, but Facebook might also take credit for that conversion if that same user saw a an ad that you had up on Facebook and then ended up converting through Google. And then finally, I, I, I run manual CPC, so I'm going to turn this off. I would recommend you doing it the same until you understand what enhanced CPC actually does. So this creates our conversion tag. I think I'm just gonna go through the funnel using Google Tag Manager. Let's see how easy this is. And as a quick recap, Google Tag Manager is just a, think about it like a, think about it like an umbrella for any conversion or tracking tag on your website. All right, so you put the umbrella on your website all you gotta do is put the first bit of code on your website that says, hey, this is Google Tag Manager. It's gonna be the umbrella for all of my other tags. And then all you have to do is bundle new tags under that umbrella. You don't have to go and do anything on your website, actually. You just do it in Google Tag Manager because that's the, that's the umbrella for where all this stuff lives. So we're gonna go to tags. So we're gonna make a new tag here. So I'm gonna give it a decent starting name. I might change this in the future, but it's called Google Conversion ad click, just so I know exactly what it is. They already have a, a tag type that I can choose. It's called Google Ads Conversion Tracking. So let's click that. Then we're gonna grab these pieces of information that they've requested. We put in our conversion ID, we put in our conversion label. We don't have a conversion value like we've talked about, and we don't have a transaction. We are not an e-commerce business. If you're doing a Shopify store, you're probably gonna have these three filled up. We also don't have any product level sales data or new customer data. So no worries there. So then we'll save that. So in tags, let's just go with this for now, conversion linker. So we need to put a, we need to set up a conversion linker that will tie our new trigger. And we're gonna put that on all pages. We'll save. All right, then we wanna to go to variables and we wanna configure this 
and we want to make sure that we have all of our click elements enabled. This will be able to set our trigger when we build it. So that will tell the listener that we can listen for the specific click URL, for instance. And then we need to set up what's called a click trigger. So we're going to go into the trigger area and we're going to create a new trigger here. And you go in here, we're going to select all elements, click trigger. And we're going to say click URL will contain amazon.com because our link clicks contain amazon.com. And we're going to hit save and we know what our trigger is called. We'll go to the tag and we'll go to our conversion event that we set up. And we're going to make sure that we fire this tag anytime somebody clicks our Amazon link. And then we just want to, and then we just want to preview it. This will put us into debug mode, add our URL, click start. So we'll send us to our home page, and you can see that we hit our home page here and it will show you all the tags that launched, including our conversion, linker, and that global site tag. What hasn't launched is this add click yet because we need to go into an article and we need to actually click one of our links. But before we do that, let's go back and you'll see that we are now in the Fortnite article. Still waiting for this to fire. So let's click out to Amazon. So we've clicked to Amazon. Just go down to this click button and you can see that our Google Ads tracking succeeded. So let's just test it again. This time we're gonna scroll down. I'm gonna click a picture. So now we went into this click and it also succeeded. And finally, I wanna make sure that the, this headline, which is also a link, works. So we'll click that and you can see that that succeeded as well. So now, Anytime somebody clicks one of our Amazon links, it's going to be set up. Make sure though that you're submitting any changes you do in your tag manager and publishing those. And we come back to Google and guess what? We're all done with our ad click conversion action set up. Hooray. And this is what it will look like. We'll start getting data in here. These all conversions will start ticking up. And more interestingly enough, this will start telling us our repeat rate. So my guess is again that about nine we'll get about an average of like nine clicks per conversion event. And we can always adjust any of those settings that we, look, we looked at, by the way. And then this tracking status says it can take up to three hours to become verified. Just making sure that, and we did this in a previous Google Ads tutorial, but making sure that you link your GA to your Google Ads. So if you come in here, this will show your linked accounts I'm not using the old Google Analytics. I am actually set up with Google Analytics 4. So it depends if you have an old website or a new one. And so you can click the details of either. I'll click this details. And you can see that my account is linked. What that allows me to do is if we go to tools and settings again and we go to audience manager, it allows me to automatically have some, some audiences set up. These are automatically created. The other ones I created myself. And then also, as a reminder, this will also let us set up conversion actions that are imported from Google Analytics. Right? We can come here and we can import data from our GA4 property, from our web property. And we can actually import what is called a click in GA4. So GA4 automatically catalogs all our outbound clicks to Amazon as conversions. They already know that those are conversions. So now all we have to do is click import. And now we have a Google Analytics conversion coming in as well. We can change the settings just by clicking that. And we will because we do not want to include this in our conversions column since we only want one conversion in that column. And we have the one we just created with Google Tag Manager. Not only did we set up Google Ads tracking through Google Tag Manager, but we imported a conversion event from Google Analytics as well. And you saw how easy that was. Either one or both are good data for you to have on your business. There are gonna be discrepancies between your Google Ads conversion action that you set up within Google Ads versus an imported Google Analytics conversion. That has to do with the way that both of the systems attribute the conversion to a click or an action, et cetera, as well as how they do click and view through conversions. We will likely just be using the Google Ads measured conversion event, but it, it took five seconds to set up the Google Analytics as well, so you might as well just to have the data. You might decide at some point it makes more sense for your business to use the Google Analytics imported conversion event, 
for whatever you're importing, whether it's a lead, a sign up, a purchase, a click, it doesn't matter. You can do the same thing that we did, just change the event that you're tracking. And realistically, all of this stuff is amazing for your business, right? There's no startup in Silicon Valley that we did not over populate with conversion events. We wanted to track everything because any piece of data is valuable for my business, for your business, for their business. So I recommend continuing to track as many events as you can as you get more pieces of content or more products on your website or more offerings for your business. Check out the next Google Ads tutorial video because it's gonna be even more important than this one. Thank you very much, bye-bye.